I've read tens of thousands of your comments and hundreds of stories about how a jump starter has saved someone from being stranded. So the question is, should you just buy a $50 jump starter, one that cost about $300, jumper cables, or why not a super capacitor? We'll see which jump starter can start a big block engine and then a diesel engine. Then we'll see which jump starter has the best tire inflator. Finally, we'll bench test the jump starters to see which one makes the most cranking amps. At a price of $59 before any coupons or discounts is this Vima brand. It claims to have a very impressive 4,500 amp peak capacity. It also claims to have a 22,000 milliamp hour power pack capacity. It's supposed to work from minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 140. We're going to test that. Two USB outs and a USB-C. It also includes a battery life indicator. LED light. The Vima jump starter is made in China. Let's kick off our first test and we'll see how the jump starters perform on this old Ford Ranger with a V6 engine. My good old cousin Eddie created some car batteries out of wood that we'll be using in the first test. Not surprisingly, the battery is right at zero volts. I've disconnected the ignition so the truck will not start. And the Vima spun the engine over more than fast enough to jump start the vehicle. At a price of $100 is this Alphabot. It claims to deliver 4,000 cranking amps and it has a tire inflator. Alphabot also claims that their battery pack is 26,800 milliamp hours. The Alphabot has a USB, 12 volt input, and a USB-C port. Unfortunately, it does not come with the carrying case. Made in China. I bench tested the jump starters before this test. Unfortunately, the Alphabot is pretty fragile and did not survive the bench test. At a price of $100, the same price as the Alphabot is this Burpam brand. The Burpam even includes a very nice carrying case. It's a jump starter, air compressor, power bank, and it has an LED light. Two USBs, a USB-C, and a 12 volt. It claims that it's a 4,000 amp jump starter with a 24,000 milliamp hour battery capacity. They also claim that their tire pump can pump up a tire in only three minutes. We're gonna test that. Made in China. I'm activating the starter by placing the jumper across the solenoid post. And the Burpin makes more than enough cranking amps to get the engine to spin over quickly. Also at a price of $100, the same price as the Alphabot in the Burpin is this Gulu GP4000. It's just a jump starter and does not have a tire inflator. It does have dual USB charging ports and a Type-C charging port. Made in China. And the Gulu 4000 is not messing around and the engine is spinning over even faster than with the Burpin. At a price of $100 is this Booter brand. It includes a very nice carrying case. It's a jump starter, air compressor, power bank, and includes a flashlight. It claims to deliver 3,500 cranking amps. Made in China. It includes a USB-C, two USBs, and a 12 volt adapter. And a jump starter is ready for action. And the Butcher did a pretty good job spinning over the engine, but not nearly as fast as the Gulu 4000. At a price of $107 without the coupon or $87 with the coupon is this Povacy brand. It has a tire inflator and a jump starter. Povacy claims that their tire inflator will inflate a tire from 0 to 36 PSI in just 7 minutes. They also claim 3500 amp jump starter, 12 volt, two USBs, and USB-C ports. The tire inflator hose tucks away neatly, and the POVA-C is not going to work with a completely dead battery. So I'll use this battery, which is badly drained. Unfortunately, the POVA-C is acting normal until connected to a low battery, and then it just gives up. At a price of $119 before the coupon, or $100 after the coupon, is this HomePal brand. The HomePal is a jump starter and a power bank, but it does not include a tire inflator. It claims to offer a very impressive 6,000 amps. We're going to test that. USB, two USB-Cs, and a 12-volt port. HomePal claims that it can start all gasoline engines and up to a 12-liter diesel. Made in China. And the HomePal is rated for 6,000 amps, and it did a great job of spinning over the engine. At a price of $130, but I bought it for $120 with a coupon, is this Autogen brand. It's a jump starter and air compressor, and an it also includes a 27,000 milliamp hour battery. The Autogen has four different input and output ports. Up to 4,000 peak amps. The carrying case for the Autogen has two different pouches. One pouch for the jump starter and the others for all the goodies. Made in China. And the Autogen spun over the engine, but it wasn't quite as enthusiastic as a Gulu or the Hompow. The Tolman brand was priced for $130, but with a coupon, I bought it for $120. It claims to have a capacity of 4,250 amps. The air compressor up to 160 PSI. It includes a USB, USB-C, and a 12-volt port. Made in China. And the Tolman is rated for 4,250 cranking amps and is doing a terrific job of spinning over the engine at a high RPM. At a price of $279 before the discount or $236 with the coupon is this JF Ego brand. It claims to offer a very impressive 6,000 cranking amps and an air compressor. It includes a battery charge indicator. It includes two USB ports but does not include a USB-C. The JF Ego is made in China. And the JF Figo makes more than enough cranking amps to spin over the Ford Ranger engine. The Keen Power Super Capacitor was priced at $300, but I was able to find a $150 coupon. The Super Capacitor claims a very impressive 6,000 cranking amps. It claims it can be used up to a million times. I'm definitely not going to be able to test that. The nice thing about the Super Capacitor is you never have to pre-charge it at home. Made in China. And the car battery that I'm using to charge the Super Capacitor is fully charged. And the Keen Power Super Capacitor is fully charged after a minute and 40 seconds. 
and the super capacitor did a lot better job than anticipated. Plenty of juice to start the engine. At a price of $370 is this NOCO GBX-155. This is the winner of last year's showdown event, so let's see how it's still holding up. It hasn't been used in a full year and it's still fully charged. And Anoko made very easy work of the V6 engine and it's spinning over the starter and the engine very quickly. So why bother with a jump starter if you can buy these jumper cables for only $17? The copper wire thickness on the jumper cables is 10 gauge. The jumper cables are also 12 feet in length. Let's try to jump start the engine off this fully charged 950 cranking amp battery. The battery is at 12.8 volts and it's making 941 amps. And the light duty jumper cables are just not going to get the job done. At a price of $40 is this set of heavy duty one gauge cables. It's supposed to deliver up to 800 cranking amps. So the question is, are these heavy duty cables any better than the light duties? And the heavy duty jumper cables are spinning over the engine a little bit faster but not nearly fast enough. Before we bench test the jump starters, let's test them out on a 7.4 liter gasoline engine in Cousin Eddie's Farmabago. And all the jump starters are fully charged. And the Vima was able to spin over the engine, but it was definitely a struggle. Unfortunately, the Alphabot is still not functioning properly. And the Burpa made very easy work of the Big Block 454. And the Gulu 4000 spun over the engine even faster than the Burpa. I don't have the fuel hose connected to the fuel tank, so there must be some residual fuel inside the fuel line. Skipping the Povacy since it's not working properly. And the Pal made very easy work of spinning over the 454 and starting the engine. And the Autogen makes more than enough juice to start the 454. And the Toman also makes plenty of cranking amps to get the 454 going. And some of the jump starters that I'm testing this year are a big improvement of the ones tested in the past. And the JF Eagle is also more than powerful enough to jump start the Farmabago. I went ahead and charged the super capacitor. And the super capacitor made very easy work of starting the Farmabago in all three attempts. And the Dodge Ram with the diesel uses two full-size batteries, and I've installed one wood block on one side and a badly drained battery on the driver's side. And a Vima jump starter claims to make 4,500 peak amps, but the Cummins is just way too much for the jump starter. And a Burpum is rated for 4,000 cranking amps or 500 less than the Vima. And a Burpum makes more than enough cranking amps to start the engine. And the Gulu 4000 definitely seems more powerful than the Burpum and made very easy work of the diesel engine. And the battery inside the Ram truck is still at 10.1 volts. And the Butcher just doesn't seem to have quite as many cranking amps as the Gulu, but it has enough to start the Ram. And the Povacy is fully charged and appears to be ready for action. Unfortunately, the Povacy is not up to the challenge. And the Han Pao claims to make 6,000 cranking amps and it seems to be at least as powerful as any of the other jump starters. And the jump starter made this look easy. And the Auto Gen has enough to start the truck, but definitely not as powerful as the Han Pao or the Gulu. And the Toman also made very easy work of starting the diesel and seems to be about as powerful as the Han Pao. And the JF Ego also did a great job of starting the diesel engine and seems to be just as powerful as the Toman. And the super capacitor seems even more powerful than the jump starter so far. Very impressive. And the Noco, which won the 2022 showdown, made very easy work of the diesel and seems to be just as powerful as a super capacitor. And the jump starters have been in the freezer for 15 hours and they're all very cold at around 4 degrees Fahrenheit. And the very cold Vema just doesn't have what it takes to jump start the engine. And the cold temperature really set back the Burpum, but it did spin over the engine. And the Gulu 4000 has done by far the best yet. Plenty of cold cranking amps to start the engine. And the booter does not like the cold and it barely has enough power to turn over the engine. And the Han Pal seems to spin the engine over a little bit slower than the Gulu. And the Auto Gen does not like the cold temperature and it really struggled on this test. And the Toman performed better than the Autogen, but not nearly as well as the Gulu in the Han Pal. And it took a couple of tries to wake up the JF Ego, but it did about as well as the Gulu in the Han Pal. And Anoko seems to have done by far the best so far with plenty of cranking amps.
and it's not even close. And the super capacitor outperformed all the jump starters on the cold temperature test. Very impressive. While it is very subjective, the NOCO and the super capacitor seem to make the most cranking amps, but let's go ahead and bench test them to know for sure. Let's go ahead and bench test the jump starters using a carbon pile tester. It's very difficult to read the two dials on the tester. So let's use two digital ohmmeters. Before we test the jump starters, let's see how a car battery performs on the bench test. And the car battery is fully charged. And the car battery emitted to 643 amps at 6.3 volts. So let's see if the jump starters can do even better. And the Vima is rated for 4,500 peak amps. And jump starter manufacturers have a very tricky way of coming up with this number to help sell jump starters. The approach we'll use is much more realistic. And the Vima only made 359 amps at 7.4 volts. That's more than enough to start a car, but that's nowhere near close to 4,500 amps. And the Alphabot is supposed to make 4,000 amps. And the Alphabot performed a lot better than the Vima at 541 amps at 6.6 .6 volts. That's 3,570 watts for the Alphabot. And the Burpum is rated for 4,000 peak amps, and it performed even better than the Alphabot at 661 amps at 6.5 volts. Almost 4,300 watts is pretty good. I've tested the Gulu in the past, and I've decided to go ahead and test it again since it performed very well. Once again, the Gulu performed the best yet at 537 amps at 9.2 volts. That's almost 5,000 watts, which is really good for a $100 jump starter. And the Butcher is rated for 3,500 amps, and it couldn't quite keep up with the Burpum and the Gulu. 588 amps at 6. 5 volts works out to only 3,822 watts. And the Povacy is also rated for 3,500 amps. And the Povacy made it to 513 amps at 8 volts, which works out to 4,104 watts to move into third place. The Hompow jump starter won't activate unless it senses some voltage. So I'm using a 9 volt battery to activate the jump starter. And the Hompow is rated for 6,000 amps. And the Hompow performed the best yet at 736 amps at 7.2 volts. That's almost 5,300 watts. And the Autogen is rated for 4,000 amps. And the Autogen made it to 536 amps at 7.3 volts, which is good enough to move into fifth place. And the Toman is rated for 4,250 amps, and it performed very well in this test. 570 amps at 8.4 volts works out to 4,788 watts to move into second place behind the Gulu 4000. And the JF Ego is rated for a very impressive 6,000 amps, and it is very expensive at $279. And a JF Ego made it to 591 amps at 8.2 volts or almost 4,900 watts. And a Keen Power Supercapacitor takes almost two minutes to charge if the power source has a full charge. It takes even longer if the battery is partially drained. The Keen Power is also rated for 6,000 amps. And the Keen Power just outperformed all the jump starters at 799 amps at 8.2 volts. That's over 6,500 watts. Very impressive. And the NOCO won the 2022 Jump Starter Showdown, and it's rated for 4,250 amps. And the NOCO just took the lead from the Keen Power Super Capacitor at 879 amps at 8 volts. And that's just over 7,000 watts. Very impressive. And the heavy-duty jumper cables only made it to 281 amps at 4.5 volts. That's only 1,264 watts which is far less than any of the jump starters. And the light duty jumper cables really struggled at only 158 amps at 2.9 volts. That's only 458 watts. Amps times volts equals watts and the NOCO came out on top at just over 7,000 watts. And the Keen Power Supercapacitor finished in second at over 6,500 and the Hom Pal finished in third at almost 5,300. Most of the jump starters have tire inflators. So let's see which tire inflator can pump up a 225, 75, 15 inch tire to 30 PSI the quickest. I have a calibrated tire gauge in line so we can measure the accuracy of the gauges on the inflators. And the Alphabot is at 94.3 decibels, which is pretty loud. And the Alphabot is making pretty good progress considering the compact size of the pump. And the Alphabot is finished in very close to six minutes. Both gauges agree that the tire pressure is around 31 PSI. The battery level is at two bars. And the Burpum is almost as noisy as the Alphabot at 93.6 decibels. And the Burpum is a little bit faster than the Alphabot at just over five and a half minutes. And the gauge on the tire inflator is a little bit inaccurate at one to one and a half PSI. And the Butcher is noticeably quieter than the Alphabot and the Burpum with a peak noise level around 87.1 decibels. And the Butcher is finished inflating the tire at around five minutes and 40 seconds or about the same speed as the Burpum. And the tire pressure gauge on the pump is off by about one PSI. Just like the Booter, the Povacy is a lot less noisy than the Vema and the Alphabot at 86.3 decibels. And the Povacy is a little slower than the other inflators at around six minutes and 15 seconds. And the gauge in the Povacy is very close to where it should be. And the Autogen is at least noisy in the lineup so far at 81. 1.4 decibels. However, it's the slowest pump yet at very close to 8 minutes to reach 30 PSI. And the tire pressure gauge is off by about 6 PSI. And the Toman is just about as loud as the Vima and the Alphabot at 93.8 decibels. And the Toman is the quickest pump to reach 30 PSI so far at just over 5 minutes. And the tire gauge on the Toman is within 1 PSI of the official gauge.
And a JF Ego is pretty noisy at 92.6 decibels. And a JF Ego is just as fast as most of the other inflators reaching the target PSI in just over five and a half minutes. Both gauges are showing just under 30 PSI. If it's all about tire inflator speed, the Toman is the fastest tire pump at 5.1 minutes. The Burpum, JF Ego, and Butcher weren't too far behind at just over five and a half minutes. All the jump starters are fully charged. So let's test the battery capacity to see how close they come to meeting their advertised rating. I'll be using a gadget that'll discharge the batteries at a set rate. Once the batteries are fully discharged, it'll let us know the amp hours and the watt hours of the batteries. And if Vema claims to make over 81 watt hours but only made 26.9, unfortunately that's only one third of the advertised capacity. And the Alphabot is supposed to make 99 watt hours and it came up very short at only 47.7. And the Burpum is supposed to have a capacity of almost 89 watt hours and it only makes half the advertised capacity at 44.7. 4 watt hours. And a Gulu is supposed to store just over 88 watt hours, and it's done by far the best so far at just over 68. And a Butcher is supposed to deliver 99 watt hours, and it really struggled at only 41.6. And Povacy claims to store 88 watt hours, and unfortunately, it only made 46.9. Just like the Gulu, the Hanpao battery is very heavy from the weight of the batteries. More batteries means more capacity, and the Hanpao is done the best so far at 78.6 watt hours. At $130, I was expecting some great results, but the Autogen only made 20% of its advertised capacity at 19.9 watt hours. And the Toman is very heavy, a good sign that there's lots of batteries within the jump starter. And the Toman moves into second place behind the Home Pow at 70.9 watt hours. And the JF Figo made it to 49.3 watt hours. If you're looking for a jump starter that can also serve as a battery bank, the Hompal, Noco, Toman, and Gulu are the only four brands that offer decent storage capacity. While none of the brands met their advertised capacity in my testing, the Noco, Gulu, Hompal, and the Toman are the only four brands to achieve over 70% of their advertised capacity. So which jump starter is the best? If you need a jump starter in a battery bank, the Noco is by far the best, but it is very expensive. If it's all about value, I really like the Gulu, and I also like the Hompal if you're willing to spend just a little over $100. If you're looking for a jump starter that also has a tire inflator, the Toman is by far the best option. I expect it'll be sold out quickly after I post this video. While it's not as good as the Toman, the Burpum would also be my second choice if the price is around $100 or less. So would I recommend a Keen Power Super Capacitor? Absolutely, as long as the price is around $150. Without having a tire inflator or battery bank capacity, the Super Capacitor seems way overpriced at $300. Every year when I post a video on the jump starters, I really enjoy reading the comments in the comments section about how jump starters have really saved people from becoming stranded. All the videos in the channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.